so I'd like you to go to um, the Ethica Data Dashboard site, okay? Um, and uh, I am going to just go back to a new browser here and I'm going to navigate it myself. So if you go to ethicadata.com slash dashboard. Many of you who are logging in the first time may find uh, yourself presented at a login screen. I'll see if I can reproduce this, in which case I'll ask you to, um, uh, to enter information. So what I'd like you to do is, I had asked you, and I know many of you, probably about 12 of you have sent me uh, the um, researcher logins that you created. Those logins, I would like you to enter here that email address and enter your password, whatever it is, and to go sign in using that. Now, if it signs you in automatically, you're fine. That's what it's doing for me. It knows it's master's voice. <laughs> 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 but uh, but uh, here, here, you'll have to enter it. Um, so uh, I'd ask you to, um, uh, to, to do so, OK? Actually, I'm just one, one of many parties in the Ethica ecosystem, but I do use it a lot. So be sure to do sign in before you would have signed up. If you haven't yet signed up, I would urge you to do so um, uh, here, in, and you could create an account and then sign in. Okay? TA, stand ready. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so um, are people logging in? Uh, who would like a bit more time? A bit more time, okay. Um, okay, so when I log in, um, the details of what you see on my screen will, will look a little bit different from yours because uh, I've been involved in many Ethica projects. So this is a set of my projects, but um, I think for you, um, you're going to have a much smaller number shown. Um, you will, however, have certain elements that should be in common with me. Do you have sample studies down at the bottom of yours? Yeah, okay. Um, some of you may wish to explore there, uh, some of those. There's a, a set of ones which are, are equipped with um, a variety of elements to to uh, create a plausible study involving a wide variety of topics from zoonoses to aspects of physical activity, um, uh, environmental health, um, uh, aspects of uh, vector-borne illness, etc. But today we're going to be exploring um, the use of the interface to create our own study. Okay, I'm also going to use it with you to allow you to explore some already collected data. But we can create our own little study and, and collect data over the next few uh, days if you'd like to do so. So um, Ethica is a platform that's designed for collection of four major sorts of information. I'm going to enumerate them, OK? Um, number one, sensor-based data. Number two, survey data, where those surveys can be triggered by sensor-based data, triggered at certain times a day, at, at uh, random times during the day, or other factors. Thirdly, proactively source data from the user, meaning the user indicates things with buttons. And fourthly, wearable data, data from wearable devices. Okay. Um, these include Bluetooth beacons, these include uh, Fitbits, uh, Google, Google Fit devices, 
and a growing number of added devices are being, ad are, are being added uh, in the near future here. Now, the key thing is that Ethica by itself um, uh, does not have any one specific interface. Rather, Ethica allows you to configure custom studies. When I say custom, you have your own definition of what's, what uh, surveys you want to issue, what sensor data you want to collect, what buttons you want people to be able to indicate what wearables you want to collect. from. So these different projects that you saw listed under here each have a different set of data they collect, different set of survey instruments, different set of, of uh, buttons, different set of sensors. And Ethica has this online system that you're seeing here, but also an app for iPhone and Android, which allows an individual to join these studies, a consenting individual. They have to go through a consent process, in which case they can join the study and, and then participate in the study, have those surveys issued to them, push those buttons, have that sensor data collected, et cetera. And we're going to see how we can interact with this system um, to set up a study uh, for those who wish to do so. They can enroll in it, they can see the interface, we'll see the data collected, and we can um, uh, later analyze that data. Okay? Okay, so this is, this is the plan. Um, and uh, Ethica has been used now by somewhere over 75 studies for the latest, for, the, for sort of the main Ethica version in its predecessor, somewhere over 100. So this is a, a system which has been used by a wide variety of partners, uh, including uh, some in the room uh, and uh, across North America, um, Europe, and uh, with Andrew and Jeff's and Robin's work, et cetera, in, in Australia as well. Okay, so what we're going to do here is um, do a uh, quick creation of a study and we're going to create the study in a lightweight way. We're going to deploy that study. And for those who'd like to join in, we're going to get it on our phones. And you'll see what it looks like. And you can volunteer information with knowledge that you can uh, pause data collection or, or not opt in if you uh, wish to do so. So I'm going to go here to something that should be evident in your interface create study. Do you see that? Okay. So we're going to create a study. And, and um, study is going to be um, uh, data science um, and system science boot camp um, study one. Okay. It's not very imaginative. Consent form. Um, this study will collect uh, the stated uh, sensor data um, uh, and um, uh, several types of, s of surveys. Um, uh, it will include proactive reporting of, um, uh, of data via buttons. Now, if you're going to create a study yourself, which you're welcome to, name it differently than mine so that we don't have clashing ones. Otherwise, what I'm going to do is create this and then add you to the administrators for it. In which case, you'll be able to see its settings and in fact modify them. Just don't believe it. <laughs> okay, so you're welcome to create a study yourself, or you're welcome to, with a different name, or you're welcome to watch as I do this. It'll take about, it'll take about five minutes till I have the first version, and I will add you in. And I have your researcher accounts um, handy, okay? So I'm going to say next. Now, watch what I'm doing here. It's it's important. I'm I'm s stating a consent form. Obviously, that would be more substantive. There was a sponsor there. I said it was the University of Saskatchewan. Okay. Now, Ethica allows you to state the entire period for the study as a whole, and then to to indicate participant duration. So those can be separate. You might have rolling admission to a study. Each participant is in there for a week, but the entire study length is six months, for example. 
So I'm going to say this is a study that will run till the 19th, sure. And each participant will be in, will just be a cohort, same as the study. And we're going to have a target size of 15, okay? Well, I'll say 20 when we consider the TAs. It'll be a public study. Anyone with the link can participate for this. Um, and uh, I'm going to say next. And this is where, so we, we set up the basic study mechanisms there. Here we're going to add data sources. And the point here is we can add any of a wide variety of data sources supported by Ethica. You can see them here. Um, I'm going to add uh, several ones that will uh, show the basic um, elements. Later in the boot camp, uh, I'm, Alex will be showing how we can use Bluetooth beacons with this uh, to track contacts um, between a person, say, and a device. Um, might be a prosthetic uh, limb, um, or it might be another actor, like a service dog. Um, uh, could be a personal flotation device. So you can track sort of the, the, whether the person is, the, per, the person with their phone or with that, that device. Um, we're going to go light in that right now. What we're going to choose is, uh, we're going to choose GPS uh, as one, and we can say if it's mandatory. Um, I'm going to say uh, say no, which could allow a participant to not track their GPS if desired. So I'm going to add this in, and now I'm going to add another one here. I'm going to add, let's say, step count. Okay. Um, so this will be. It's not in the Google Fit pedometer, but it's a regular pedometer here. And I'm going to say this is mandatory. Yeah. And I'll add another data source here, uh, which will be the uh, surveys. Those are further down. I'm seeing if there's anything else. Survey responses. Um, and uh, is it mandatory? Yes. OK. So this is a very simple study uh, in terms of its uh, data sources, but it's quite a common configuration. You want to know where people are answering certain things, how much physical activity that they're getting. Maybe we'll also track screen state, a favorite, Tina's favorite. <laughs> um, so, so here we have are tracking whether their, their device screen, their smartphone screen is on or not off. You know, in a study of falls, we might be interested, how, how does the occurrence of a fall relate to their using their phone? Maybe in terms of sleep quality, we're interested in terms of, of how, their, um, how their use of a phone affects that. Or physical activity, we're interested in, in knowing about their phone as an explanatory, uh, phone use as an explanatory variable. Um, I would note that uh, the sleep quality is an element of, of uh, Fitbit data collection that's supposed to be added in soon. They have Fitbit heart rate right now. Okay, so we've just delineated that for this study, we want to collect this information. Most of them are mandatory, but people can opt out of GPS if they want to do so, okay? Meaning they can not have GPS enabled. It will still allow them in the study. Okay, so I'm going to say next, and then it's going to ask me, okay, look, do you want to, do you want to poke these people um, if we haven't gotten information from them? So for example, um, if they aren't responding in terms of surveys or data is not coming from them, uh, might we want to send them a, a text message, et cetera. Here it's actually as an in-app notification, although they're going to SMS messages to, to poke people. So even if they uninstall the app, they can still get the, the poking, okay? So this is for adherence management. Um, whether you want to allow a dropout option through the app. Um, for low income participants uh, or for others who have uh, concerns about data plan wise, um, uh, we can allow Wi-Fi only, meaning it's not going to put any data out over the, um, the cell data network. I'm going to select it here, recognizing some people come from afar um, and uh, I don't want to put their data plans out. Um, and I'm going to go create this study. Okay, so here I've 
I've created the study, and what I'm going to do is to add you folks in as as participants, or sorry, as, as uh, researchers to this. But you notice it says, do I want to define the surveys now? Um, I will say, no, maybe I'll do it later just so I can add you folks in, okay? Um, I'll go back to them. Okay, so here's my study. You notice right now, uh, only I'm listed. What I'm going to do now is to go and add each of you in. So here's your Ethica accounts. And so I hope you'll pardon me as I just add each person in. So Paul has just been added. And here comes Andrew. And uh, here's Kira. OK. Now, what this will do is this will allow you to see this on your list of studies. Um, and it will allow you to analyze data from it, allow you to, uh, to request changes in principle um, to it, et cetera. OK, so it, it, there's some suspense right here. <laughs> Have I lost my Wi-Fi or what? OK, come on. OK, what's, let me just check. Oh, uh, yeah, I lost my Wi-Fi, it looks like. OK, um, what's going on? Uh, Radisson Conference, uh, OK, blue, yep, looks fine now. OK, Terry was added, I trust. Uh, yes, good, OK, cool. Um, go and pardon me while I just add people in. OK, most of the way done. And there we go. Okay. Okay, so now we have uh, the set of you that are should be uh, authorized to see it. If you folks go and refresh your set of studies, I believe that you should see that study under your uh, your list of studies there on the left hand side on the list of projects. Do you see that? Okay, cool. Okay, so we just configured the basics of the study in terms of data. But remember, I said there's four types of information that Ethica collects. Two of them have been handled so far. What sensor data and what wearable data we're collecting. But the two middle ones have yet to be defined, and that's what we're going to work on right now. To wit, survey data and the data proactively reported by a participant via button. Okay? So, so we're going to uh, go ahead and do that. Um, so what I'd like to do is to go to surveys now um, here, and, um, in, and these are under the design area. You folks can poke around uh, if you'd like to do so. But under design, basically we can say what data sources we want to collect, what surveys. Uh, if you feel inclined to change things, I would suggest setting up your own study just so you can modify at, at will without changing it out from under us. But I'm just going to go and uh, go to surveys and I'm going to add, add in a survey, okay? Now, um, the surveys uh, in Ethica are a key part of functionality, and they turn out to be key for two things. They turn out to be key in terms of um, uh, surveys asked of someone uh, uh, sort of passively um, to them, but then, then they're also important in terms of their self-reporting uh, via the buttons. So we're going to find, I figure, why don't we do this one around, I kind of like the idea of uh, say a tick-borne illness one, will have them um, report when they uh, found a tick on themselves, um, uh, will we'll have them when they found a rash, and uh, perhaps when they, uh, when they uh, sought care. So here we'll have a survey name. Um, this survey is going to be called, um, um, maybe I'll ask a baseline uh, survey, OK? This will be a baseline, questions asked once. And maybe this would ask for demographics. So what I did is I just indicated uh, baseline. Um, 
so it's the study entry survey. I indicated it was a baseline, so it knows to ask it once. And I scroll down, and it has questions, um, question sets. There's some survey settings. Do I want to capture their location when they fill it out? Sure. Um, and given their permission. Um, and uh, I'll show their progress on it so that they know their progress. In this case, it's going to be a very simple answer. So here I have a survey interface by which to thank you, Christine. See you in a while. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a ton. Okay, so this is the, the interface for defining survey questions. Okay, so we can drag and drop these these types of questions over there. So I will ask them, for example, this is a single answer question. Um, uh, and, and here we're going to ask them, you know, please, um, uh, please indicate your, um, uh, please indicate your, uh, your sex. Okay. Um, and, um, we will ask them to say, okay, male, uh, female, uh, and we can give an other category. Um, and uh, maybe then we'll ask them for their, their age. So I'm going to drag in. You'll notice that this is all on one page. I can put questionnaires on a single page or multiple, multiple pages. Single page means that the question will be right below the other one. Multiple pages will mean they, they won't see the later questions until they fill out the earlier one. But maybe I'll ask, um, you know, please, uh, please enter your age. Okay. Um, and uh, here we will, um, we'll just uh, leave that uh, and we will save this. Okay. Now, to get you something interactive with this as soon as possible. What I'm going to do is to um, define this survey. I'm going to go back now. Okay, so I said save it here. I'm going to go back to the main interface and I'm going to define another survey that will be triggered by a button. That one, the baseline was, oh, someone, well, someone else added one. Okay, well, cool. Um, that'll be that'll be fun. Good. I, I love seeing people get engaged. So I'm going to do add new survey. There we go. Um, yeah, there'll be lots uh, lots of fun coming up. Okay. So here we go. New survey. Um, uh, um, uh, found tick. Okay. Um, uh, or tick reporting. Uh, tick reporting. This will be a generic survey. It won't be a baseline. Um, and, uh, and this is going to be uh, user triggered and it will say, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, I found a tick. Okay. So this is a user triggered survey and we're going to go add in a survey uh, uh, set of information here. Now this one's going to be a bit different. This one's going to ask them um, uh, about their risk factors and then it's going to ask them could they take a picture of the tick and submit a picture with it so that we know whether it's a black-legged deer tick or what have you. Okay, so, so here um, we'll drag in and we'll say, you know, please, um, please, uh, uh, um, indicate uh, which of the um, following um, uh, uh, were uh, true. Um, that's, that's a poor way of saying it. Maybe you could suggest a better way. Um, uh, uh, which of the following, I'm tempted to say personal protective practices you were following. Uh, personal protective practices you were following. This is going to have a bit of an intervention flavor as well. Um, so I was wearing, um, so wearing long sleeves um, and add answer wearing long pants. Uh, and then um, 
using um, uh, a uh, using insect repellent. I don't know how effective that would be, um, uh, and um, uh, avoiding uh, seeking to avoid contact with high grass and other vegetation, something like that. Okay. So this is one question. Then we'll drag in a second question that will ask, um, uh, could you take a photo of the tick now? And the answers will be yes and no. Okay. Uh, next, this is critical. I'm, I want a questionnaire that's going to be condition or question that's going to be conditional on their answering to this. It's only going to show if they said yes, they can take a photo. So I'm going to add a new page here, add page below. This page is going to prompt them for an image to take an image. Please take uh, the um, please use the following. Uh, to take a photo of the tick and then submit, okay? And this page, I'm selecting the whole page, is only going to be activated if they answer yes on this question. So this could you take a photo of the tick only if they answer yes to that. In other words, question two has answer one. Not answer two, which is no, but answer one. In that case, only then will the user be shown this, this question here. Okay. Okay. So uh, having done that, we're going to save this. And now we're going to validate. Okay. Okay. It says it's ready to publish. Okay. I'm going to publish it. Uh, and I'm going to say, yes, update the devices of everyone who already has, is enrolled in that study. Currently, I don't know if anyone's enrolled in it. Okay. So I'm going back to uh, to this. Um, oh, it looks like, oh man. Um, okay, well, there's lots going on uh, here. I'm a little bit worried because actually you're not allowed to have more than one baseline survey. So um, I'm going to actually, I hate to tell you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete it. Sorry. Um, okay, I'm gonna delete this duplicate one because really you can only have one baseline. Okay. But let's get it to you as soon as possible. So if we go to basics, you'll notice that there's a study registration code, which is 515. If anyone would like to do so, you could go to the Apple Play Store or the Google, the Google Play Store or the Apple Store, and you could download the Ethica Health app, okay? Um, one way you can do, it, like if I'm on an Android device, I could do Play Store and I could search for Ethica, E-T-H-I-C-A, health, okay? Um, and you should see a little puzzle piece. You should see a little puzzle piece. Um, there's actually plugins as well, like app usage to monitor app usage or browsing behavior. We don't want those right now. Um, we, want the, uh, we want the top one, Ethica. You'll notice there's a custom one, Alberta Prevents Cancer. That's another custom Ethica app uh, role for, for um, uh, Alberta Health Services. We just want the Ethica one, okay? It's a little puzzle piece, do you see that? Okay, so if you open that app, I wanna be clear here. If you download Ethica, by default, you're not enrolled in any study. You're, 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 you're just sitting there, unless you choose to be enrolled in a study. Now, there's Basically, a couple ways you can get into a study. One way is the simple way I'm going to show you now. Most studies these days actually use a more sophisticated approach yet. So we have this study here. If you go to the upper left menu, you can say plus, and it says join study. Let me show how I did that. So once you install it, you'd see an interface. Mine only has studies here, but you would, in this upper left menu, if you click that, you will see join study. Do you see that? Join study plus. 
Oh yeah, sorry, you'll have to enter your password. This is, sorry, participant, participant ID to enter that. It's different than your researcher ID. So once you download the Ethica app, um, you will either need to sign up as a participant right then and there, or if you already did, you'll, you'll um, sign up as a participant. You'd use a different email address than you did for your researcher account. Sorry, I'm sure there's one to that. Okay, should I give you a bit more time? Okay. So many studies these days use a link which when the user clicks it will actually go and download, download the app, um, go to the study and ask the user do they want to enroll in that study rather than forcing them to go through this direct enrollment process. Okay, who would like a bit more time here? A bit more time? Okay, it's an ambiguous response. Um, I'll engage in a back off protocol that will have me wait between zero and thirty seconds. Yeah. So let's talk about adding as a researcher. Oh. Uh yeah, good. Okay. Um can I can I do it right now? Okay. So Oh that's sure, sure. Okay. So um so uh so Delphine, um just uh Gosner. Oh no dot no dot? Oh, yeah. okay. At gmail.com. At gmail.com. Yeah. Okay, okay, sure. And uh, and then, was that Amber? Yes. Okay. Uh, and uh, Amber dot? Um, it's ADE0028 at gmail. ADE0028? Yes, at gmail. Dot com. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, anyone else want to be added as a researcher? Okay. Okay. So this is study five one five. So I'm doing join study five one TAs. Please help people. Eh? Yeah. Make sure you're you're helping people uh, get on there. Okay. I'm going to say find. Okay. It shows me the study, the information in the study. Um, and you'll notice that it says what it collects, right? It says it collects screen state GPS pedometer survey response. And I'm going to say register. I'm going to go ahead. And now you'll notice that it presents an interface. And what's on that interface that we designed? Yeah, button. So I'm going to say I found a tick, okay? Oh, man. Um, I was certainly wearing long sleeves, long pants. I was not using insect repellent, but I was seeking to avoid contact with high grass and other vegetation. Now it's asking, can I take a photo of the tech? Yes. Okay, please use the photo to take a photo of the tech. So I'm going to take a photo and... Okay, there it is. Okay, there we go. Okay, and I'm going to submit it. Okay, so I just submitted my first tick report. Did you people see a button for to report a tick? Good. Good question. I'm wondering if that got screwed up because of the two of them. That is that is curious. Because um, yeah, you should have been I should have been asked immediately the baseline question now. Oh wait, wait a minute. It does tell me there's a notification. Okay, no, but I don't have to. Don't see that. Yeah. Hmm. That's weird. Sorry? I deleted the most recent one. Yeah, it's probably that. Because it actually prevents you from adding two at a time. But if two people are doing it at the same time, it probably allowed it. That's the problem. Huh. Um, so uh, I, can, I can add another one, but you know, we'll leave it for now. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, um, here we'll go to survey, uh, excuse me, to, uh, so in the interface uh, of this study now, I'm going to go look under the surveys area. We've been dealing with design. I'm going to go under surveys, go to responses. I'm going to say I'm going to look at all things from all sponsors. Here we go. Oh my gosh. Look at that tick. That's, that's, that's a nasty, 
That's a nasty thing. Um, okay. There's a, wow, this is... Oh my gosh. Okay, that's pretty, that's pretty clever. Um, this is... Look at, look at this one. <laughs> that's, that's great. Um, wow, we're... Okay, um, <laughs> maybe somewhere in the two takes. So, um, at least he has a, some eye protection, right? Um, okay, so the round trip has been completed here. You know, we just, uh, we just defined this. Let's go, so, so you can see this in um, operation, uh, I mentioned that Ethica allows you to define, deploy one of those, a study, but it also allows you to monitor it and to refine it. Let's just go take a look at that. Let's go up here to the basics, uh, excuse me, to the participation, and we'll go to adherence. And what we'll find is that there's uh, quite a few people in this study right now. Um, perhaps people even watching my YouTube live channel um, whilst I'm talking. So uh, here we have uh, people. They, they um, are all anonymized, as you'd hope. Um, uh, they have different types of devices here. Some of uh, Asus, some of iPhones, um, etc. You can see uh, some of them uh, have GPS information here. Uh, whilst others others do not. Um, and you can see here the last recorded date of data from them, when they joined and, and when their last day will be. Um, and uh, for each of these individuals, whoa, we actually have the option of, for example, extending their participation period, um, uh, updating their device or, or, or deleting that participant. Um, in a way that that can be useful um, for for management. What I'd like to do, though, yeah, um, is to let's go add a new survey and let's put it out to the devices. Can we do that? Okay. So let's do this now. We're going to say add a new survey. Okay. Okay. Maybe I'll suggest people hold off again. Like maybe do it on your own studies uh, for 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 now. Um, just so we don't get that uh, confusion again, yeah. The network, the network is getting again a bit, uh, a bit slow here. But okay, so this will be rash reporting, okay. Um, uh, and uh, maybe, maybe here, um, this one is kind of similar to what we just did. Maybe I'll have this one be um, a personal. Personal protective, protective div, uh, um, um, measure use. Okay, and this one will be a generic survey. It will be, it will be a scheduled triggered. Okay, we're going to schedule it at at certain times, and I'll do it fairly frequently. And to do that, I'll do add here, and then it asks me, okay. When do I want to do it? I'm going to say repeatedly trigger it. I'm going to say it repeat. I'm tempted to say, well, let's say once per day. End repetition. Um, never. Okay. Um, so that will be just to the end of the study. And you notice it shows me um, uh, to where it, um, it where it will deliver it. And I'm going to say. Uh, deliver it between 9 a.m. and uh, and let's say uh, till 5:30 p.m. Okay, so during the hours of the boot camp. Okay, so I just added it, and it says when it's triggering uh, at a random time. And then I'm going to go in here and say, um, uh, 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 let's say, uh, uh, have have you um, encountered um, or have you uh, uh, during during 
your periods outside, have you um, uh, been observing um, uh, uh, any, you know what, this should not be one of these, there should be a multiple answer. It's called multiple choice, it should be called multiple answer. Any of the uh, following protective practices. And I will say here, answer. Um, so this will be wearing long sleeves uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, avoiding contact with vegetation. I'll just leave it there. You get the point. Okay, um, I'm going to save it. I'm going to now validate it and I am going to publish it. You'll notice it's asking, okay, for the people who have this, do I want to push it out to them or do I just want to push it out to certain participants or to no one at all, just n new people who, who happen to get it, okay? Um, and, uh, and notice it says if I have more changes to make, only, uh, only do it after I applied the last change. I'll say, yes, update the device for, um, for those, uh, those existing participants, okay? So I'm gonna go back. Now this is not gonna be asked immediately of you. This is gonna be asked once a day on average. So you may not see anything immediately. But I think what I'm going to do is to go and push it out to, uh, push it out to some people here. So you'll notice that it says release now, and I can set select participants to release it to. So I'm gonna release it to a bunch of you. Here we go. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask a bunch of you to fill this out. Um, it is your destiny. Okay. <laughs> uh, here we go. Um, and, okay, come on, let's, let's fill these in. Um, okay. Maybe not, every, well, I'll just do everything, fine. Come on, come on. Okay, getting most people, it's a bit awkward. There we go. Okay. Okay. Okay, there we go. Okay. So I've just filled in the names of people to get, oh, I could have said all participants. <laughs> Man, <laughs> sorry. Okay, um, survey released. Okay, so, so you should get a notification on your device um, if you're on Wi-Fi, you know, um, and it says I have a survey to complete during my periods outside if I've been observing the following protective practices. Do you see that? Yeah. So I'm going to say submit. So now, now I have a new survey. This is going to be asked on average once a day according to random times. I could set it for certain times exactly if I wanted to, but it's random times. Now, this should get you thinking though, because this, this question, wouldn't there be a better time, a better principle by which to, to trigger this? Like when you're outside, actually trigger it at that time rather than at any time during the day saying when you were outside. Um, and this gets to the point of sensor-based triggers, okay? Um, triggering things based on conditions, like maybe when you're in a park asking you about your, your reasons for coming to the park, or when you're in a fast food restaurant asking you to, about your attitudes towards fast food and healthy eating. Um, or when you're in the company of four or more other participants in the study asking a question about that. Um, in some studies, uh, one study we're running right now with service dogs, when you haven't been with the service dog for a certain period of time, as measured by the beacon on the service dog's collar, um, it'll ask you about barriers to being with that service dog. Or, you know, if you've been engaged in centered behavior for too many hours, maybe it could ask you about um, barriers to physical activity and, and uh, motivations for, uh, for, for sedentary behavior right now, if you're too busy or what have you. Okay, so you've gotten... Just quickly, Matt, the, yeah. the, time, the time there is always Saskatchewan time, is that right? 
the time. You say when you want to deploy a questionnaire, if you want, you want to do a five o'clock every, um, every Monday. It, good, good question. I should know the answer to that. What I know is that um, uh, it does support many, many time zones. I believe it's in the time zone of the participant. Right. Um, so if, if there's someone who enrolls in the study from Europe and someone from Australia, someone from here, and it says issue it at 5.30, I believe it's always 5.30 their local right. time, wherever they are. So if they travel and they go to a new place um, and switch time zones, I believe it'll trigger in that time zone at, at which they're currently present. I believe that's the case from some discussions of that, yeah. Okay. Um, other questions I can answer right now. Okay. So, so just going back um, now to the surveys, we could look at, you know, once again all the the surveys, and and you'll notice that now we're starting to get some of these other other um, uh, studies uh, or surveys answered, like this one here, right? Um, this is one of the new surveys that's being answered. We could have, instead of saying all surveys, it probably would be much easier to just say um, personal protective measure use and go and look at, at that one in particular. Okay, um, So you can see for the different participants their, their responses to it. Now, I don't expect this to be very effective right now because we're indoors a big building, and I don't think we're going to get many responses but um, uh, I'm going to oh it looks like my baseline survey may have been deleted oh, okay. no oh, I guess I no, mumble um, yeah because they have no location data we're, we're inside a large building we can't easily see the GPS satellites so I think we're not going to be able to map these out let me show you for another one uh, where we where we can map things out um, what I'm going to do is go down to this one, uh, which was another demo. You folks don't have access to this, I believe, but, um, but I will. Um, and I'll go down to uh, geolocation. I think first what I'll do is do surveys response map here and try all participants and, and see, okay. The surveys, I was inside when I filled it out, put my geolocation here. I'm going to say all participants, and I'm going to do it towards the beginning when I launch this survey here to the end of July, and, and we'll, see, um, we'll see if there's any, okay, there's no geo data shown in that period, so Give me just a second. Um, I have a, uh, okay. There's sometimes uh, an issue which prevents the geodata from showing properly. So I'm gonna go back to this on a new browser window, okay. Here we go. And HQC, uh, sorry, sensor data, geolocation, and all participants. There we go, and okay, okay, yeah, there we go. Okay, so this is examples of heat map data for for this. This is one participant in this period uh, uh, who happens to be speaking with you, but um, but basically showing showing heat maps during this period of time where that participant was spending time. You could probably guess where I lived, and where, where I lived at that time, and. Uh, and where I spend time at work and, and uh, uh, over at Health Quality Council and so on. So this is a, a heat map showing sort of activity spaces. Um, it even caught me in my bike ride um, uh, along, along uh, Preston. Uh, so um, when GPS data is available, and it won't be right now, if you were to leave this hotel tonight, uh, it'll start to collect uh, GPS data. And we, by, by tomorrow, we should be able to see some GPS data for participants. Right now, the GPS signals can't easily penetrate. Okay. Um, so what we've seen here is definition, deployment, <coughs> monitoring-related features with this uh, adherence. Um, 
as adherence monitoring, being able to reach out to particular participants uh, uh, to send, uh, oops, I'll go up to this one, to send, uh, to send messages. We've also seen how you can get some routine reporting associated with, uh, for example, surveys. What we haven't done yet is to look at some of the other data that's collected. And we're going to do that in a system known as Kibana after the break. But I think we are due for food here. And I want to make sure that we don't start on something. And let's see. It doesn't look like it's here yet. So. Okay. So um, this is the, the basics of Ethica. It's a system that allows for easy modification and easy deployment with, um, with no programming required for most studies that are run. Um, uh, and have, hence quick iteration. Yeah, Leah. Is there any issues regarding just in general with um, wearable sensors and so on that you know, you know you're being observed, yeah. so? Hawthorne effect. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, there is. Uh, studies that we have done um, have informally suggested a lot of that takes place in the opening days of the study when when the feeling is most acute but um just kind uh, of after a while you just forget that that's right that's right um uh, yeah uh this this is true across multiple modalities um uh, and it mirrors the experience of some other researchers using similar tools so I know a, a research group that we work with in Harvard has spoken about similar things where um, they were monitoring browsing behavior of participants and like, like ourselves, we, we saw behavior mostly change in the first week and then it reverted to a norm, um, which uh, was not uh, privacy uh, sensitive. Um, so, uh, so my observation is that it is it, it might factor into whether someone participates at all, like, you know, they, they don't want to join. Mm -hmm. But I think in terms of long-term dissuading them from sharing data, um, with one or two exceptions of participants in the dozens of studies I've been involved with, you know, where, where there has been active evidence of that, I haven't seen much evidence of this being an ongoing issue. Um, but, you know, um, I think greater study of that issue is, uh, needs, to be, needs to be conducted because probably for some participants it is there. Certainly we've seen lots of evidence that in the first few days there's a lot of novelty and so people do things differently or, or engage in other types of non-standard behavior um, than they would normally. Do you kind of discount that initially? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so for example, we'll often chop off the first day, for example, um, and not, not consider it. In some cases, it's involved ignoring data from the first week, just because I've, I've seen evidence of, um, you know, of, of sort of transient patterns where, you know, after a few days, it, it kind of seems to, to equilibrate to a, to a different sort of patterning. Um, this was more true when we used to give out phones for these sort of studies um, for like lower income participants. We would give a phone and, and there was a lot of novelty for the phone. These days though, it's almost all run of participants on smartphones with the exception of, of individuals who are low income in a way that it's a barrier, in which case we do st still give phones out for, for low SCP individuals. And, and there I'd say the the footprint is larger because it's more of a novelty for them to get to learn to use the phone and to weave it into their lives. And so I think a longer initial period is, is better there. Yeah. yeah. Other questions? So we haven't looked at some of the more advanced features, this triggering based on uh, sensor data. Um, for example, geolocation. Uh, we haven't looked at triggering based on Bluetooth beacons. These kind of 
markers that you can use to mark particular locations or actors or resources or what have you and trigger things based on that. We haven't looked at wearables with Fitbits, um, although if there's interest, we could do so later in the week. Um, but uh, this should give you a bit of the flavor of, of how Ethica can fit in. And what's notable is that in this context, we have data uh, being provided uh, that's, that matches the four Vs. It's, it's quite high volume. It's high velocity. We're not only getting these surveys, but we're getting other sorts of data. So, you know, if we looked at the design here, the data sources, we are getting GPS data when it's available, pedometer, survey responses, etc. And we're getting some screen state data. How, how much uh, the phones are being used. Um, so I think what we'll do right now is I'm going to go over to Kibana. Okay? Kibana is a powerful visualization and analysis toolkit that, is a, that accompanies Ethica. Kibana can be used to, to learn about query visualize and share visualizations from Ethica data in a way that could be given out to, to, to individuals and the visualizations can stay updated over time. They're not static quantities. Um, so having gone over to Kibana, I'm going, I'm going to go to the Discover panel here. Okay? Now Discover, you'll notice, is something which is specific to the current study. In this case, I'm looking at a study E277. So the first thing I want to do is I actually want to go and um, create what's called uh, an uh, index pattern for the associated uh, studies, okay? So um, I'm going to say um, here, I'm gonna go to the works, what's called a workspace. Workspace is basically provide a way for, um, for working with data from one study or from many studies for my own use or one study for shared use. If I go to workspaces, there should be something called Ethica, Kibana Ethica Study 515. Do you see that? Okay, so I'm going to click on that here um, and uh, and basically, I'm setting that to be my current workspace, okay? So I'm focusing on study 515. By contrast, there's a personal workspace above which can be used to work with many different studies privately. But here, I, I just wanna do it for one study, okay? Um, and uh, I went to, to management and I'm going to say, I'm going to create what's called an index pattern. This really only has to be done once, but I'm going to do ES515 uh, and, and it'll be pedometer here, okay? Um, so 515 pedometer, okay? Um, and, uh, and I'm gonna say next step, and I'm going to say do uh, record time, that's fine, and create an index pattern. You folks don't have to do this, I'm doing it. So I've created an index for the pedometer entry, and I'm gonna create uh, one more for the, for the survey responses as well. ES515 survey response. This is just done once ahead of time. After that, it's defined, and we don't have to do this again. It's because we just created this survey responses. Okay, here we go. I'm going to say next step and I'm going to do this based on uh, record record time here. Okay, and create index pattern. Okay, great. So now we've done this for these. Now I'm going to go to discover and you'll notice here it's showing me the records it has over the last 15 minutes for pedometers. Um, and I'm going to ask it to actually show me the last 
uh, at the last 30 minutes here, okay? It's not, not changing too much, but you'll notice that it's showing me some, some information here over time being gathered by the participants here, okay? And these are from different sets of participants. Um, so this is providing some understanding of the, uh, the data coming in. I could, for example, go click here and say add steps. And you'll notice that we're largely a sedentary bunch here, right? Um, floors ascended, I would expect is minus one. Okay, okay, so <laughs> that, that's pretty scary. Um, uh, I guess some people I think have, have gone through the floor or something. Um, uh, and, um, and then I'll add the user ID here, uh, which won't mean anything except some of them will be uh, from from myself. So it looks like user seven. Uh, there's there's quite a lot of records from seven three two eight. So this gives an understanding of some of the what's being what's being collected over time with respect to this. I could add a filter, and I could say, for example. Uh, I happen to know that I'm user from my phone, user, I think it's 2785, I believe, 2785, and I could filter it, uh, for example, okay, so, so it looks like um, there was, uh, it was not getting, maybe, maybe that's, uh, I have to check my, my settings, here we go, on my phone, 2785, yeah, okay, I'll sync my data, okay. Um, uh, oh, I'm not on Wi-Fi, that's, okay. Um, okay, I'm gonna have to deal with that later. Uh, okay, so ladies and gentlemen, um, so in addition to that, we can do visualization, okay? So um, uh, one of the nicer things about uh, Kibana is that it allows you to create visualizations. So I'm going to say create a visualization here and I'm going to say I'm going to create a pie chart. So I went to visualize here in the Kibana menu, and I'm going to say create a pie chart, okay? And I'm going to do it, say from, oh, someone else created a, looks like, okay, this is interesting. It looks like there's duplicate indices, okay? Um, I think multiple people are doing things. I'm going to say pedometers. The slice size is the count, and I'm going to split the slices, and I'm going to split them according to here uh, terms, and uh, the term will be uh, user ID, okay. And here, okay, wow. Wow, this is, is really interesting. There's a lot of pedometer readings com coming from one of the participants and the others have comparatively fewer. Um, that's, that's very interesting. Um, let's go, uh, so this is one uh, visualization. So how did I do that? I added a pie chart. I went in and I said, uh, split the slices. The aggregation is so-called terms and and it's according to user ID and according to the count. So this, this reflects the, the count of them. One person's phones is recording just an awful lot of, of, uh, of um, survey IDs here. Okay. Oh, you know what? Um, we could also make the slice, this thing, the sum of their, uh, of their steps. How, how's that? That would be pretty interesting. Okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. One. One. Oh. Uh, so user three thousand five hundred forty-three is reporting a very large number of steps. Well, that's that. That's uh, <laughs> curious. Okay. So we're going to go back and create another visualization. This will be um, a visualization of a. I think we'll do a uh, vertical bar here and we'll give survey responses uh, on the X response and we will, for the 
x-axis will select a date range as given by record time, I think, okay? And, and I think we'll do uh, one, one, so we'll do it now minus 60 minutes till now, something like that. Um, okay, then, okay, I think you have to, you have to do this, okay, okay, um, it's, it's just okay, no, okay, um, so accepted date formats, let me make sure I've got that, okay, so hours, minutes, so minus one hour, yeah, okay, got it, okay, minus 60 minutes till now, yeah, okay, okay, so why, oh, minutes, there we go, Okay, and okay, so it's trying to aggregate it up to a, a larger level. So this, this is basically going to allow us to look at survey responses over a, and I'll do a, there should be a date histogram, that's what I wanted, date histogram here, uh, there we go, yeah. So this is date histogram, this is survey responses within a certain time. So this is basically 2.15, this is just before 2.20. These are the count of survey response. I did date, histogram, and record time. There, so this indicates when people were answering surveys over time within the participants, okay? And I'll save this one. This will be a survey answers, survey responses, um, uh, uh, over time. And this is a histogram. It's, it's, this means that there were 10 answered in that period of time. Uh, there were two within around, uh, uh, around uh, 23 past, etc. So here we can create uh, visualizations that we can come back to over time and we can change over what period of time they're applied. For example, I could say this is over the last hour by picking over here and picking um, uh, the length of time. So I'm going to save it. Visualizations can be used to, to provide a, an understanding of people's behavior over uh, different um, geography, for example, where they're answering certain questions certain ways, um, or, or what they're answering in response to questions. Um, they can also be used to, to sort of indicate how many people provided responses. So here, for example, I'm creating a, so I just went to create a pie on survey responses. I'll do it on the first one. Um, we're going to have a count uh, as the size of the slice and we will have a, in terms of aggregation, we're going to split the slices uh, uh, according to term and according to user ID here. And this will give a sense of how many people have answered how many survey questions. So for example, here user uh, 7349 has answered nine surveys, uh, 7341, six, uh, 7376, six, et cetera. Okay, um, so uh, here we are, uh, we are able to summarize sort of the responses by different, uh, different individuals. And I will save this again. So these are survey responses per individual. Okay. There we go. So Kibana provides a way of easily depicting, uh, easily depicting um, visualizations of the data. Um, the visual builder is a particularly uh, nice way to, to quickly define 
visualizations over time that I may come back to. But right now I want to show one other feature of these uh, whilst waiting for the, for the food here. If we go to these surveys, you'll notice that if we were to open one up, we can actually use this option that's called share. And the share option allows this survey to be shared with others so that they can see it updating over time. Okay? So by sending out this share, you can essentially allow people to see summaries of the data from an Ethica study as it evolves over time. So there's a link here um, which can allow for uh, the visualization to be shared in a way that it's updating. There's also a link to a snapshot of that visualization. In other words, showing the current data in that visualization only. The left one will be live in the sense that tomorrow it would look different. You could come back to it, you could share it with others, uh, and they could see the latest information about participant responses. By contrast, the right one would be to share a, um, a static depiction of the situation right now. So uh, if I went here and I could say copy, uh, that would allow me to go and call up this, uh, this visualization uh, easily as a, um, oh, okay, so uh, you'll need to create an, uh, okay, mumble. Um, uh, so this should allow me to share it with others, and I'm not sure why, and maybe because I'm already in Ethica here or some, some such. Uh, I'll have to come back to that. But this, this can, be, uh, can be shared with, uh, with other individuals in a way that allows, allows them to be posted um, and, and viewed by a broader group of people. Sometimes uh, those can be distributed to participants. Okay, um, uh, there's another mechanism for creating a dashboard where basically you can add visualizations from the visualizations that were selected earlier and use those to monitor in a dashboard that you can come back to. So what I did here is I went and uh, went to, the, to request a new dashboard. I said create a dashboard. I then went press this add button and I can select which visualizations that I already defined I would like to have as part of this dashboard. I can save it and I could say, you know, primary dashboard. And uh, that supports a collection of visualizations as live updating from the study. You can see some people are still, still answering surveys uh, down here sort of summarizes uh, uh, data from the survey in a way that can also be shared. So this dashboard can also be shared as an instrument to provide people a depiction of, of what's going on with the study. So um, I've shown a lot of the basics of Kibana. Kibana has some additional features that are, that are quite advanced. The coordinate map and, and geo, geo visualizations we'll be seeing in coming days. And then this, um, this final visualization type, the so-called visual builder, uh, I would note is, is uh, particularly nice for looking at data over time, which is of central interest in this book camp because it provides an understanding, for example, of uh, dynamics, uh, dynamics involving um, uh, measurements like step counts or like uh, accelerometry data or data from heart rate, uh, etc. So the visual builder is uh, uh, an easy to use mechanism that can allow for summary of data in time series um, that as time allows we may come back to on another day. So any questions that I could answer about Ethica as a whole or Kibana in particular? Uh, having had this whirlwind deal, yeah. So I, when we're in Ethica, I can yeah. see what you're looking at, right? Like as a researcher, that's right. I'm part of the study. So when we move into Kibana, I see. Like, should I be able to see all of the dashboard that you created? So, so it's a good question. Um, 
certainly I can share it with you. Um, uh, but this is actually a shared workspace that I'm in here. And uh, so in other words, when we go to these workspaces, you'll notice there's one which is private to me, but then there's a shared, then there's a set of shared workspaces. You see this? So here's a, here's a personal one and here's a shared one. Uh, these are a set of shared ones. And these shared ones are designed to allow for group, uh, group um, sharing. And uh, my understanding is these visualizations and dashboards can be readily accessed by other people with access to the study. Paul, yeah. Uh, I think the issue is under management. You yeah. need to select an index pattern as a default first. So you click on one and set as a default, and then you should be able to see everything. OK. Uh, uh, so um, you're saying, for example, select this guy here. Yeah, and then the top right is the uh, yeah. star. So yeah. that's setting as a default, and then you should be able to see everything else. OK. So. So this guy uh, is blue around it, which says, okay, uh, is, if that's the default index, then basically I should be able to see that as a, um, as sort of uh, the others associated with that, is yeah, what you're saying. If you don't set a default, then I won't let you do anything. Okay, yeah, thanks, that's, that's helpful. We'll have, to, we'll have to help others see if they can see mine now. Yeah. Okay, good, yeah, Andrew. That's, that's right. That's, that's right. If, if, precisely. Sorry? Uh, they don't get it on the app right now. The plan is, so, so the way Ethica is going, um, this sort of information, uh, is one of the prime um, prime steps in the next six months is to add the ability to visualize um, web-based content, including these dashboards and these visualizations within the Ethica app for yeah. the participants. Yeah. Right now, it's in the form of sending out uh, shared um, links that they can go to in a browser. But uh, the hope is, and the plan is to have Ethica be able to deliver web content within it, which could include these visualizations. And that would allow a person to keep track of, for example, their, um, uh, their uh, contributions to study compared to the average contribution for others, or compared to um, the, the number of records that others have contributed, you know, of photos of barriers to physical activity in their community. Um, they can see um, they can see how their contributions match up. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's a lot of the plan with this is to not only support the research group but to support the participants. And it would be a it would be something where the participants could come back to and see it updated. Yeah. Yeah. Particularly for engagement, I think you can yeah. find this in an adolescent couple. You know, to sort of to say, well, look, you know, congratulations, you. Answer these questions. This is, you know, this is your physical activity related to other people, and, right? You know, that kind of thing as well to try and keep them yeah. engaged in the study. Yeah, exactly, and and that's much of the motivation for this and for creating dashboards um, is is as a mode of feeding it back to the participants to get them a stake yeah. in the game. Yeah, yeah. So so that's good. Other questions about about Ethica more generally or about Kambana? Yeah. It's a good question. So they're adding in progressively new sets, and I know they they support any device which is part of Google Fit now, which is I think a set of different devices. I'm not sure if the Apple Watch is in there. They also have added Fitbit as far as its heart rate is concerned, and I think. Like this week or the next, they're trying to get the um, sleep and uh, step count data from Fitbit in there. Um, uh, I can't say with sureness about the Apple Watch, but I'll get you an answer. <coughs> yeah, it, it, it's probably one of those devices in the near future that will be rolled out um, for support. Yeah, yeah, Delphine. So this is all new to me. I've never seen a uh, software or an interface that will gather this type of uh, data. So from my perspective, this is the only one. 
is no, no, there's actually, so uh, th there's actually um, uh, a set that over time have, um, have addressed some of these needs. Um, uh, and it's, I, I'd say it's the one with the highest, um, the highest uh, sort of type of functionality, the broadest set of functionality supported, and certainly the one that by far supports research teams the most in terms of monitoring adherence, in terms of you know nudging people who have not uh, who have not um, responded recently, in terms of providing a mechanism for for visualization of data, in terms of um, uh, allowing for study modification and rollout and eliminating programming, you know, trying to eliminate programming. Um, there is one from a company called Data Cube that seems to be focused on very high-end randomized clinical trials, um, but it's a much more narrow, specialized market rather than uh, trying to reach out and support health researchers, uh, health practitioners much more broadly. Um, and uh, and I don't know that they've done work with uh, wearables as part of the ecosystem, which is a big goal of Ethica. Ethica is also so it's in a, a period of, of, of transition in terms of wanting to also, and this is going to sound strange because people are, are used to thinking of it as a phone app. Um, the uh, from the Ethica perspective, the phone, the fact that it's delivered on phones, is actually not central to its uh, raison d'etre. In other words, um, uh, th the perspective is the phone is a convenient device for data collection, um, uh, but it's, it's now part of an ecosystem of such devices. And Ethica is making the step away from relying on the phone app being installed. So the idea is you could be in an Ethica study for some of their studies, which they have running, like there's a basic income study in the states that they're supporting, which um, uh, where people don't need a phone, um, that may sound odd, but the point is they can fill out surveys on their time use, which is a lot of the goal for that study, um, using a browser, and if they can wear bra wearables with the browser-based interface, they don't have to have it on their phone for certain types of information to be collected, including heart rate, uh, pedometry, and so on from the wearable and uh, browser-based uh, responses to surveys. The, the app is a nice to have, but it's not, a, it's not a requirement. And that's important because some participants switch phones, they forget to install the new app, and a lot of the goal is to stay connected with those individuals. Yeah, even if they don't want the app on their phone, they can still be sent a text message and fill out a survey via browser without having invalidated their role in the study. You know, it's to make it as lightweight, low footprint, um, flexible as possible. And, and in the growing age of, um, of wearables of various sorts, you know, uh, really putting an emphasis on having the wearables be an, even an alternative to the phone. Yes, complementary if desired, but it's an it's a alternative from the perspective of, um, uh, of certain types of sensor data. And so if people don't want to be have the app on their phone, they don't need it, and they can still be a full body participant, if that makes sense. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, Ethica, uh, it, you know, I, I obviously have a biased opinion here, but, but I don't know any other app that measures up to what Ethica is, is doing in terms of its breadth of support and in terms of its uh, accessibility to a wide set of researchers. Yeah. Other questions? So Ethica, we'll, we'll be returning to it over the next few days, but uh, I will just note that um, you know while we've uh, been here, um, we have, uh, you know, we've seen that uh, there's a large amount of survey data that's been contributed, but also data on uh, pedometry, and uh, tonight we'll see a large amount of GPS data likely connected. Um, it provides a platform for, for storing, for accessing, for analyzing, um, this sort of high velocity data that's uh, coming from this sort of study, okay? So, um, simple demonstration of its use, but powerful. 
And uh, over the next few days, we'll see how it can be used with additional types of wearables as well, including the Bluetooth beacon. Okay? Okay, so that's Ethica. Uh, any final questions I can answer? Okay, I, I believe we're supposed to have, I'm kind of lost without um, Christine's. Is there food there? Cool, okay. The food is ready, so if you'd like to go there, we're gonna go to search-based data and Twitter-based data following the break. Uh, and, and complete our sort of survey of some big data sources. So we'll uh, come back here in about 15 minutes, I think, if we could. Thanks. So Paul, so, so this default, this idea of the default um, uh, index. So um, the notion is uh, when I have a default index, other people who share that default index can see my visualization? No, they have to set their own, as far as I could tell. Like, okay. I'm not very familiar with the system yeah. yet. Yeah. Uh, but I was trying to see the visualization and everything, and yeah. it would always kick me back to the management and say, you have to select something. I see. And so you have to click on one of the um, indexes and set it as default, and then you can access everything else. Got it. Which is a little bit of a weird system, but it which makes is sense in a way. basically makes sense of that uh, message I got when I tried to see the visualization. It yeah. said you need to set up an index. And like, exactly. What's yeah. going on? But the point is, it needs to be your default index. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Exactly. And because you set it up, it was automatically your default one, your first one, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And but for everyone else, it wasn't set up automatically. So. Yeah, that's why. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. That's, yeah, that's no really helpful. Thank you.